Do you want to start a business, get out of the office, achieve happiness and success while crushing life? This is Boss to Boss, the place to be for that extra motivation to get up and follow your dreams while learning from the ones who have already done it. And now for your host, Miro Wieslow. Welcome to Boss to Boss. Today's guest lives outside of Chicago in Rockford, Illinois, and works with organizations and personal brands all over the country to overcome their marketing discontent and grow their brand so that they can focus on sales, exposure, and community impact. At 25, she was named one of the top 20 people you should know by her city. At 29, named one of the faces of tourism for her region. And at 30, one of the register stars people to watch. She's been featured talking social marketing and travelpreneur lifestyle in Huffington Post, Reader's Digest, and several others. When she is not running her local businesses in Rockford, Illinois, she is traveling the globe, learning at conferences and workshops, and expanding her knowledge give, to give back to her clients. She is the executive director of Winnebago Buy Local, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to connect local businesses together to collaborate and bring the community closer to them, creating raving fans, which puts together a social media conference each year called Social Rock. Her passion clearly revolves around seeing businesses and organizations that do good succeed. Lauren Davis. It's a pleasure to have you on after knowing you for, for a while. It's been a, it's been a long time coming. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This is very exciting. <clears throat> yes, yes, it is. And um, for the, all those that are listening, whether on YouTube, Facebook, or any of the awesome podcast avenues that we're on, whether it's iTunes, Google, Stitcher, and you want to follow along uh, to see, uh, see her story, see her, some of her work, the best place to follow her is L Davis Creative. Pretty much everywhere from what? Facebook to Instagram. Um, yeah. L Davis Creative almost anywhere on the internet is me. Awesome. And she does, she does an amazing job. Not that she doesn't do it anywhere else, but Instagram is her baby. Uh, I know she, you talk about it a lot and hopefully we'll probably get into it, into that at a point too. I do love Instagram. That's definitely my favorite. That's my favorite platform by far. That being said though, um, let's just, uh, if there's one thing, something you do, something you're maybe currently working on, something different, something that you just want us to, to uh, see what, what, how else we can connect with you. What is that right now? What, what don't we know about you? Um. I think some something fun that people uh, might not know about me is, uh, well, at least people in the digital marketing space might not know about me or the people that follow me on Instagram is that I actually also own a record store in Boutique in Rockford, Illinois. And that was my, that was one of my first businesses, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but um, that's something that totally doesn't necessarily fit into the digital marketing stratosphere. However, I think having that store really has given me a little bit of an edge because I do know what it feels like and what it takes to be a small business um, that, you know, has to pay the overhead and um, grow from scratch. So that's one of those things that some people might not, might know, but some people might not know. And that's so cool. And that, that story goes further since you didn't really have a typical I'm over here. I'm going to rebel. I'm going to get out of my office, out of my nine to five and, you know, just pretty much tell, tell everybody that you're done. Like, this is it. I'm doing it for myself. You had a little bit of a different route to get to where you're at and you've been very successful. How, where was the turning point in that route that you realized, you know, this is it. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be running a business. I want to be creating my own future. So it's, it's a funny story because I feel like there's all these little moments in my childhood and in my life that, that make me who I am today and that I look back on it now and I say, that makes sense why I'm an entrepreneur now. Mm -hmm. um, but like starting with when I was eight years old and I made a business plan to pick up my neighbor's cans and I would walk around with my wagon and pick up their cans each week and I had a, a certain time I would be there and... Um, you know, they had to have their cans ready for me in a bag. And then I would recycle those cans. I first of all, I got them to pay me to pick up their cans. Then I also recycled them to make some money from it, 
Um, and I would save that up for myself for something special. And that turned into tons of lemonade stands and lots of Kool-Aid stands and um, garage sales and um, lots of things growing up that just, I, I obviously had the bug, you know, the bug that yeah. makes people <laughs> want to work for themselves. But I didn't know that yet. Then I worked for my mom's business growing up. She was an entrepreneur as well. She made gourmet dog biscuits. Um, and then I, my dad was an economic developer, so he was always talking about small businesses and how to bring them into the spotlight. And I guess, um, you know, I grew up, I went to high school, worked really hard um, at journalism. I really wanted to be a journalist. I took news writing and newspaper, I was on the newspaper. And at 19, I actually met my boyfriend, who's now my husband, and we started a business, well, I met him after a few months after he started the business and we worked together, um, went full in a few months later and developed this awesome record store and boutique that still exists today. And we're celebrating 12 years in business right now. So um, that was what kind of started the whole entrepreneurship journey. Not mm -hmm. something many people do when they're 19. And if they do, it's not something that usually is successful, but right. <laughs> Doing that, um, you know, I was 19 and he was 25. So doing that at that time, uh, we just put everything we had into it. We ate, slept, breathed that, that business. And I, um, you know, worked a second job on the side. I worked at a fast food restaurant and I, we were so broke that we would just like, he had a second job at a gas station mm -hmm. and I would just like eat at the fast food place. Actually it was Panera. I worked at Panera and I would eat there and then I would um, not eat again until I went back to that job because we had no money. We were just putting everything into the business. Wow. Talk about really making full <laughs> use of your job, right? Right. <laughs> wow. And then I, uh, you know, after that, we, I, we kept working hard. I, I used my second job to pay my way through college. And I, as the business was kind of getting started, I realized really quickly that journalism had been very helpful to me in the way of copywriting and marketing our business. And I switched everything I was doing to marketing and design and, uh, uh, you know, business side of things because I realized really quickly that I was like kind of addicted to the whole marketing aspect of a business and the graphic design part of it. And so journalism really helped me in that way. I don't think that me wanting to be a journalist took away from that. It actually added to it. Um, and so took art classes, business classes, all of that, and started my own business in 2010, which is Lauren Davis Creative. So you sort of transitioned, right? You, re yeah. you initially weren't really sure, but getting out there and just putting yourself out there, just making something happen, you were able to kind of learn what you were best at, right? I'm sure yeah. you I'm sure you probably had to do many roles, right? You probably did some accounting stuff, some finance, some selling, right? Not that yeah, with our businesses, we kind of have always been, you know, we do it all ourselves. I mm -hmm. don't know if that's the best way to go about it. I think you should definitely delegate. But I think that failure has never been an option for either of us. And so if we are going to do something, we do it with 100% of what we've got. Um, my business now, you know, people, People always tell me, Lauren, you got to be okay with possibly failing every once in a while. And I, I yes, put do. myself out there. I do take risks, but I try to never fail. So I'm working on that. Right. Oh man, that's, that's great. That brings me back to some talks we've had prior. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, that's out of the scope of here. Uh, that being said, I guess going into, uh, going into the marketing realm, you know, that, that was the, that was what you really loved. And you know, that's what it's pretty obvious now. Why, why marketing? Why, why Instagram more importantly? <laughs> so Instagram is my favorite platform. Um, but I don't think it's a, a magical do all for every type of business. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone should find out what or hire someone to help them find out and strategize what the best platform for them is. Instagram just happens to be my platform of choice that I like to hang out on. So if people follow my stories or look at my posts, they'll see that I'm on there quite often. I always answer everyone's comments and messages and I just like get a huge kick out of being on there. It's my favorite. But that being said, there's other 
there's other businesses that might not get as much of a benefit out of Instagram or there's other businesses that might thrive on LinkedIn or Pinterest. Mm -hmm, And it's mm -hmm. just like one of those things that, um, you know, that's what I do best is try to help people narrow down what it is that will help their business grow and flourish through digital marketing, but also through other marketing forms, public relations, um, and marketing strategy in general. Yeah, you you really do do it all. I lo- I like to think that if if you hire someone to not just work on marketing, but uh, kind of fix the things that are going wrong for them to make it sound good, and you've helped me a lot too. I'm gonna you know, uh, like, I'm definitely gonna throw it out there and you know vouch vouch for you. Like you definitely helped me a lot, and a lot of other people that we uh, that we know, and your work has been you know superior. It's been it's been amazing and. Thank you. And you learn a lot of this on the fly, it seems like, right? Like, the, So it seems like if you really want to do something and you put yourself out there, how, what do you feel? Do you have to go to school about everything? Can you just learn some of these things out, out there on the fly? What do you think um, about that? I don't think that everyone needs to go to school to succeed. Mm-hmm. I learn best in a conference environment, which it, to me reminds me a little bit of school. And I think that that's why I I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I um, was even the overall best student, but I do like learning in the moment because I have a hard time shutting off my brain from other things. And so watching YouTube videos or, um, you know, reading a informational thing about something Mm -hmm. is not going to do the same thing for me because I'll be thinking about all the other things on my desktop and all the things I have to do. But when I can put myself in an environment to learn, that's when I learn the best. So again, it's about what works for you. Um, So conferencing has been a big help for me. I think that people can learn a lot from that, not only in learning from the people speaking, but also in learning um, to network and to make connections and meet people and um, make connections like you and I have made a connection. You know, I think that that kind of stuff is invaluable and you can't put a price on it. And it's definitely something that you don't get as much of in school. That is for sure. I, I hope that schools make a transition one day as yeah. people are just inevitably going to go to them as it's kind of part of our system. Though it would be nice if you actually learn some of these intangibles and some of these things such as networking, for example, or mm-hmm. how to work on social media, something that's so important and all around us at all times. Do you like think that we're... Uh, tactical, that tactical, yeah. actionable stuff that is real life stuff. That's, I think, Mm -hmm. a little bit of what's missing in school. Um, I don't think I got, I mean, I didn't get all of my knowledge from school, but I did love the design program I was in and I loved my professor. So, um, and I didn't really feel that way about school until I got to college. So it's a good compliment, right? You kind of find what works for you and and if it doesn't, just drop out and (laughs) go for it, right? (laughs) Do, Do what you, do, find a way that you thrive and go that route. If everyone thrives in a different way, you know, mm-hmm. I love that word. Ever since the conference we were at thrive. I love that word. It's like, don't strive thrive. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, always have that in my head. Tell yourself that every day, right? <laughs> every day when I wake up, <laughs> I'm sure there had to be. Yeah. Right. I, I'm sure there had to be a mistake or two along the way. Is there something you know, to get to where you're at right now? You, you've done so many different things. What, what, what was a crucial mistake that no matter what you had to ha- go through, you just had to, and everybody else that it, you know, it goes through something like this, you think it's going to be very valuable if, if it happens. Sure. To you. Um, my biggest mistake, and I'm still paying for it in some ways, is not valuing my time. Um, your time is your most precious possession. Mm-hmm. And I have struggled with putting the correct value on the amount of time that I spend on something. Um, And so in the very early beginning stages of my business, I underquoted things vastly, like to the point where it was hurting my business. And the first couple of years, I, you know, I didn't make anything. I, I could have worked at my store taken minimum, a minimum wage from my own store and made more money than what I made doing work and I stressed myself out in the process. Um, So having systems in place to understand what your value is, but then also having systems in place like contracts 
or um, proof warnings or, um, you know, talking to a lawyer and just making sure that you're like, just the basics are legally set. Um, things like that, you know, nailing down your conversation with people, nailing down your scheduling. Like now there's Calendly, which is so, you know, and all these scheduling apps, which yep. are great for managing time. Um, this year, I feel that my business exponentially grew because I started managing my time better. And I still have so far to go and so long to go with that. I think we're always growing as entrepreneurs. We're always learning. But that's something that I would say those were that was a crucial mistake. I don't know if you want like specifics or if but that was like, I, I can remember several like full years where I feel like I just worked for nothing. Yeah, I mean, if you got a moment that you like replay in your head all the time and you're like, ah, this day, this just gives me goosebumps. <laughs> like we're, I'm, yeah, I'm curious okay. to hear. Hmm. Okay. Well, there was a client I worked for early on that um, I did a lot of work for and I didn't necessarily have a contract in place with that mm -hmm. client and they ended up being a not so great person um, and not paying me. And when it, came down to the wire, I, you know, I had to, um, get in touch with their business partner and go through all this, these other hoops just to get paid, which was already too low to begin with. And I had, um, you know, done a bunch of extra work for them, like set up print jobs for them, set up this other stuff. And I just, you know, I, I bent over backwards because I, that's what I do for every client I work with. I, you know, I find them special. I don't, I only work with them for a reason. And so I think that, um, I trusted my gut in that situation. That's one of the times or that I'm sorry, I didn't trust my gut on that one. I, that was one of the times that I kind of said, you know, this seems a little weird, but I'm going to keep going with it. And, um, I've re come to realize that trusting my intuition and trusting my gut on something, usually I'm an intuitive person that usually steers me in the right direction. First mm -hmm. of all, Second of all, having things in, in place, having your contracts in place, even if they're friends and you think that nothing weird is going to happen, um, just send off the contract. They want to be protected as much as you do. And it's not awkward. Just send them say, oh yeah, haha, this is silly, but I got to have you sign this. Just read it. You know, I, so, I can relate to that part. Yep. It's definitely a little awkward. And once you do it once, it's like. Yeah. It's not that it, bad. It's, it protects them as much as it protects you. It and um, it holds you accountable for the work you're doing, but it and also holds them accountable for paying you. And um, even if it's a friend, just, and that's, you know, in the case of this situation, it was somebody I thought I was friends with. So, um, and later on, that same person wanted me to do design work for them again. And I had to say <laughs> no. So um, it was, it was interesting. And I, I think that, you know, everyone makes mistakes. They were early on in their career too. And I think they made a mistake. I don't think that they, um, you know, I just think they made a mistake as well. So I'm always forgiving, but I, I do think that managing your time, valuing your time and having systems like contracts put in, in place makes everything run so smooth. I think that's very important. And I definitely brought that up in one of my previous rants, that's for sure. Yeah. Not having contracts in place early. Oh, yeah, I listened to that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for that. And yeah, it's so, it's so important. It's just um, even if it's a small little thing, it, it, you couldn't have said it any better. You know, it covers them just as much as it covers you. And I love to tell right. the customers that when they're like, why should I sign this? There's all this legal language here. And I'm like, it's, it's just the typical things you would normally get like when you get a receipt or when you make a purchase. It's like, Maybe they, they don't make you physically sign something, but you know, it's all kind of that same language and you're protected one way or the other, both, both of you are. It's just, it's so important and, and key. I even put something on my proposal or my contract that says, my lawyer makes me write all of this, but you should probably read it. Oh man. Did I see that before? No, I don't Maybe. know. I don't know. Maybe. It stops I, people in their tracks though. And then they do read yeah. it. I feel like I've seen that. If I didn't see it in yours, then I saw it at one of my friends, uh, somebody else that I know yeah. had that in their contract. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, ha, pretty <laughs> clever for a contract. Huh? But now you're yeah. sitting here. You're like, all right, all right. Yeah. I, I stopped and I looked at this thing. So right. if it's part of it, you know, it's, uh, I mean, if it catches your eye, I think that's even better. 
That's we're all in the business to help each other. And yeah. you know, when, when someone hires me, they want help. And so I'm, I'm there to help them and I will go above and beyond it with everything I do. So, um, you know, why not just look at that contract, sign it up, make it official. That's the best way to go about it. Even with friends. I couldn't agree more. If there's someone there out there right now, our boss to boss listeners, uh, someone, someone like me, I was sitting there a year and a half ago and I was just debating about life in my cubicle. I was, I just wasn't sure what to do with myself anymore. And I'm debating, is this entrepreneurship the thing for me? Can I go after it? Is it even possible? Is it just a, you know, a little fad? Can, uh, wh- what would you tell that person if they're debating, you know, obviously you, you, you worked at Panera, so you have some nine to five experience, yeah. not too much. You're, you've, this is kind of one of the things you've known, known, known. What would you tell them? So I don't think entrepreneurship is a fad, first of all, because if there is a problem in the world, and we have a lot of problems in this world, mm-hmm. if there are problems in the world, there will always be space for an entrepreneur to solve that problem. So um, I would say if you have an idea and you're inspired by it, do it because there is never the perfect time. Like I was just talking to my personal trainer today about health stuff and about, and also about digital marketing strategy. And, you know, he, I was, I had some excuses about um, why I keep forgetting to set timers to eat and work for 16 hours straight. And he had excuses about, you know, why, um, or not excuses, but he said, you know, I'll, next year when I'm done with this job and I'm done with this, then I'll start focusing on this. And I said, well, just probably how you say, you know, to me, there's never a perfect time to start taking everything seriously. I would say to you, there's never a perfect time to jump into it. You're never going to be like, oh, I have this great financial buffer. I can start now. Um, You just kind of have to, you have to be responsible about it. You have to, you know, put some good Um, pillars in place to safeguard you but you're never gonna have the perfect moment where you're like okay now is when I quit my job and now is when I start my business um I would say figure out who your biggest cheerleaders are figure out um Hmm. the logistics and the the pillars of things that you need the bare minimum of things that you need to get started and um start working on it as a side hustle and then you know switch on over also good, never good. Go back. yeah you should make like a little guide or tutorial to becoming an entrepreneur or how to do it that's uh <laughs> that's nice. i'll add that like to it. my list of things to do. <laughs> of things to do yeah. yes i got a, got some free time oh yeah you, you definitely have a lot of free time yep yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> super sarcastic there uh <laughs> if you do follow her if you do follow lauren davis if you do check her out on instagram for example you'll see the numerous things she does, the numerous, uh, numerous people. I guess one, for example, um, is Build Your Network, featuring um, Travis Chapel. Yeah, I, so, I, Travis is great to work for. I've done a few um, design projects for him, and I've, I work, help him work on his Instagram as well, and mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. kind of clarifying the mes- messaging on his Instagram. So. Yeah, working with Travis is a blast, and he's yeah. a very inspiring guy. Yes, he is. And um, happy to work with him in in all of those regards. Yeah, so if you want to see her work, and that's just one of the countless people that she uh, helps out with, and you could uh, right away tell from when she took over. <laughs> There's just a big, big difference in his content. I mean, it's it's, it's drastic. Just, yeah, it's just different. Anyway. So it it changes, but uh, it does. There's a little small change, but. He was doing a good job too, um, but I think we just it it helps to like focus on the guests and the posting and um, the content within the posts, and I think we really have it headed in the right direction. Why do you think that it, that's so important to focus on? Uh, the, for example, with him, it's his guests and the people that are on his podcast. Um, so everyone's plan is different. Everyone's marketing strategy is obviously different depending on what their goals are and what their target is. But um, I think that being like for for him, the issue was consistency. He felt he didn't have enough time to come up with consistent um, uh, post guests and stuff like that. So I think that that was what I really 
we really dove into together um, and created some kind of consistency of, around promoting the guests that are on his show. And why is consistency so important in social oh, okay. media? <laughs> well, consistency is important because, um, well, first of all, the algorithm bases a lot mm -hmm. on consistency. Um, it uh, bases a lot on um, the amount of times people are interacting with your posts, the recency of your posts. So if people are interacting with your posts uh, every day or every other day or a couple times a week, it's good to keep them on that same schedule of interacting a few times a week. Otherwise, your the algorithm will you'll you'll kind of bounce off of it because they're not um, going to see your stuff, and it really depends a lot on recency, frequency of engagement, um, that kind of thing. So if you are not <clears throat> frequently engaging with them, or um, you know they're not frequently engaging with your page, if they're not messaging you, if they're not participating in your polls and stuff like that they might not see your posts unless they were scrolling for quite a while. Exactly. So, I mean, that's the real technical reason. Hey, that's some quick tips for all your listeners. That was free, free over <laughs> here on boss to boss. Uh, that's, that's great advice. And I think uh, for anybody out there that's looking to just get better, you know, figure out like, Oh, why, why am I not getting as much love as I once, once was that that's a very, very good reason as to why. And, and I think that, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I would just say that I would definitely, you know, contact you or uh, talk to you about it. I know you're very open and you're always very welcome. You know, if there's anybody else has any other questions or maybe, uh, you know, that you guys, you, you could collaborate in one way or another. Who knows? Yeah. I actually plan to do like an ask me anything type of um, live, live thing sometime soon here. So oh, keep an update. Great. yeah, keep an eye out for that on Instagram. Um, but what I was, uh, eh, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no worries. Obviously, if it was important enough, it would come back. Sure. Not, not, that, not that none of it is. And I mean, right. all of it is very important. So now it is on to our listeners' favorite segment of the show. Welcome to the round with no name because they're all taken. Yes, that's right. Fix the headset. Make sure you can hear everything I'm saying here because this is going to be life or death practically, especially with my producer, oh, Steve, lurking in the background. We don't want him coming out. You will have five seconds to initiate an answer for every question. Um, let's not. Let's just not deal with the consequences if if it exceeds the five seconds. Okay. okay. Uh, you can elaborate on any answer though later as much as you want. Okay. Going going forward now. Here we are. Who is or is currently or has been your greatest mentor? Oh. Um this lady named Marianna Johnson here in town who told me in the very beginning that um, don't worry about your competition just do your best work all the time. All right. That's a, that's a great quote. I love it. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite book? Uh, How to or be a badass at making money by Jen Sincero. I've heard about that one. Yeah. If you're stranded on an Island, what is the one item that you want with you? My dog. Okay. Okay. I think that's actually a first. That's a boss to boss exclusive right here, right now, folks. How do you drink your coffee? Black. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what they say, right? That I'm a serial killer. <laughs> yes. You're, you're psych, you have psychotic tendencies yeah. or yeah, all that yep. good stuff. So yes. I'm, I'm allergic to dairy. I can't help it. Ah, uh, well, I'm a black coffee drinker myself and here, here we are. Here we are talking to each other. So that, yeah. that probably, that probably explains a lot of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, if there's one item, if there's one item you want with you every single day, maybe it's something you wear on your person or something you drink, eat. What is the one thing you need every single day that you can't live without? Uh, definitely my phone. I, I do so much of my business off of my phone and I love, I love my phone. But I couldn't bring it on an island because what would happen once it's yes. on a battery? So many people answer their phone and I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay, for so. the next six hours while you're trying to call for help and then it's gone. Especially if you have an iPhone. I mean, right. you'd be lucky to get that six hours. That's why I'll bring my dog. I can keep her alive and we'll, I'll have a friend. If, uh, if there is one business right now 
any business. It could be anything in the world. They had an unlimited amount of capital and you could start it up today. What would it be? Oh, I don't know. I think I would keep, is it weird to say, I think I would keep doing what I'm doing? No. I mean, if, if that's your path, like if that's fully what you would do for the rest of your life, no matter what, then yeah. I love what I'm doing. I would probably invest in more help. Mm -hmm. Um, I would take the time to delegate and understand, or, you know, hire more people to, to help me with the processes I have. And, um, then I'd be able to travel more and work more remotely. And that's probably, I would do the same, a variation of the same exact thing though. Awesome. I think that's very important because now we know that what you're doing, you, you are truly about. And it's yeah, really, I love what I do. That's awesome. Is voice specifically podcasts, audiobooks, is that the future? Um, it's hard to, it's hard to know. I would say to some extent, yes, because I think that everything is going back towards the human connection. Um, it's kind of gone in a wave, you know, everyone mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. it's technology and, um, you know, the big brands, the big companies have come and gone and now people want to seek authenticity again, seek uh, friendships and relationships with people. And mm -hmm. I think that you really get that from a podcast. You feel like you're sitting with them. Awesome. I like that answer. I, I think hey. I'm going to have to use that one for my promotional purposes. Okay. <laughs> Here, listen, because Lauren Davis told you to. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the last one, last but not least, you sort of already answered this, but is entrepreneurism a fad? No, I don't think so. Again, because if there's a problem to solve in, in the world, and obviously there's a lot of problems out there, um, you will always have entrepreneurship. We're never going to live in a utopia style universe. So what um, if there's a big corporation that could handle all the problems out there? I don't, I, that's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's very scary to think about. Um, and I don't think it will ever happen. Okay, good, good. It sounds reassuring. <laughs> I think we're all uh, safe. I hope so. Okay, good. I don't know uh, for sure, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, with this I day think, and age. Yeah. All right. Well, we have survived. You're still there. I'm still here. We yeah. Made it. We made it. We made it. Um, is there anything you want to elaborate on? Is there anything um, or any other, you know, if the mic is yours right now, any closing thoughts for the listeners? Yeah, I would love for any of the listeners to follow. First of all, follow me on Instagram, uh, L Davis Creative, but also check out hashtag Social Rock. Um, it happens the third week of May on a Monday every year, and it's the most, um, uh, you know, best kept secret social media conference in the Midwest. So uh, we we always pull in big speakers. Mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. tons of actionable content. And we're always looking to make it bigger and, and show more people where we're at and show them that Rockford is a really cool place to come hang out. So that's hashtag social rocks. Social right? rock. Social rock. Hashtag yeah. social rock. Right. And to check out more about that, do we search it on the web or do we hashtag it on Instagram? Yeah, just look up the hashtag on Instagram and you can see um, from previous years. And um, it's, it's brought to you by Winnebago by Local. And that is where you'll find more information about it. Okay, awesome. And you have you have definitely pulled some big names recently, that's for sure. Even to Rockford, Illinois. For all yeah. you that don't know, it's a good hour and a, a good hour, hour fifteen out of Chicago. Yeah, yeah. It's about right. ninety miles west, but now that ninety has opened wow. up, it's a huge it's really short to get to and forth. So Yeah, it's literally literally just a straight shot with the with the highway if you come to Chicago. You just yeah. rent a car or find a good phone, a good friend and drive up there. Some um, people um, think uh, some people call Rockford a suburb of Chicago, actually, but we're not necessarily, I don't, wouldn't call us a suburb because we actually have 150,000 people here. Yeah. So Rockford's a quite pretty big. big, yeah, it's actually pretty big. And um, we were just named in Reader's Digest as one of the top 15 up and coming places to live before it gets too crowded. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. I no Thanks. wonder, no wonder you're sticking around. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've known it for years. We love it here, but you know, a lot of people have left, but they're going to come mm -hmm. back. 
Okay. And this was what, like the 2018 or 2017? When was this? It just happened last week. That article just published. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I know. I'm excited. uh, Yeah. That's wow. Okay. I mean, that's no, that's huge. That's huge for just being around here because living in anywhere in Illinois. Yeah. We're in the same region. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, everybody that's L Davis creative, check her out uh, all over the, all over the web. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, uh, it's definitely been a pleasure to have you on and speaking with you and, you know, speaking with you while recording it at the same time. It's been pretty fun. It's, you know, <laughs> even, though we, even though we talk, you know, all the time, whenever we could. Yeah, this has been so much fun. Um, definitely the most I've laughed on a podcast interview yet. So. Oh, good. All right. Well, then yeah. <laughs> that is something uh, I will definitely take with me and, and tell Steve, tell my producer about. And okay. Tell him, tell him that we're doing something right over here. So Steve, he, we're doing something right over here. Yes, yes. You heard <laughs> that, Steve. All right. Well, we'll talk. We'll definitely talk again soon. We'll uh, look forward to catching up with you in the future as well to kind of see where you're at and you know yeah. just to uh, see how the next conference goes as well. Let's yeah. Hashtag social rock. Social rock. Yeah, maybe you can come to it. It's not too far away. Yeah. No, I'm definitely going to be on the lookout now. I mean, right. I'm not too far at all. No excuse. That is all for this episode of Boss to Boss. Your next step is to visit boss2boss.com where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step. Again, that is boss, the number two, boss.com. And remember, the time is now.